got the Miami Heat at the Toronto Raptors right now. The Raptors, uh, plus one and a half point home dogs, uh, plus 108 on the money line. Total sitting here at 228. Uh, this one was tough for me because, man, I usually like the Raptors here as a home dog, but then Heat on the road, uh, it, it, they're pretty competitive. Number felt about right. Couldn't really get to anything interesting, so punted it away. Uh, Chris, how say you on this Heat Raptors game? Yeah, I guess this is going to be the only game I talk about today. We got some interesting breaking news coming breaking out about the next game. Yeah, uh, I'll leave that to Sean, who who is in charge of breaking news as our host. But um, yeah, you know, some trends that that I like in this game, which I'm usually not a big trends guy, but in this case, I think it speaks to the identity of these teams. Um, these Miami Heat, when they're on the road, they're they've been pretty much a dead nut under team, fourteen and seven ATS to the under when they're on the road. And only four out of their 14 recent games have gone over this total tonight of 228. Miami, obviously, you know, without Jimmy Butler, as they continue to play without Jimmy Butler, I'm not even sure if he's playing tonight, to be honest with you. I'm not sure if it matters. Uh, because, that they, you know, they rely on that defense, right? That's what they do. That's what Spolstra does. That's what his culture is all about, Miami Heat culture. And they do that even more on the road. Tor- Toronto, the same thing. 10-9 and nine ATS at home, so it's kind of close. And you've seen some recent home games be high scoring, right? But that's been against teams like Utah, Atlanta, Cleveland has found the rhythm on offense. I think this is going to be a slog fest tonight between two teams that like to run the court slowly. Anyway, Toronto runs even slower at home. The heat tends to run even slower when they're on their, on the road. And like I've said about the heat before in this show, when the other team has a particular tempo that they like to run by the heat, just kind of adopted. I mean, we've seen this in, in many situations before. I think it speaks to Spolster's, Ability to adopt in game as well, you know, kind of just play. Excuse me, uh, but yeah, since my German Shepherd has lost control, I guess I'll just end it there. I think this is way too high. I have this game ten points under where the total list now, so I have to take under two twenty eight. Yeah, no, I, I I I couldn't make a case for the over here. Um, laying out a bunch of good reasons why this. Yeah, this just feels like an ugly close game. You know, number is probably right when it comes to the side, but yeah, total that does feel a little high. Shark, any any thoughts here? Side total, just this game in general. Yeah, I mean, when I looked at this last night, I thought to myself, this has to be a Toronto spot. I mean, Toronto comes in here on an L4. We just were talking about this off the air. Didn't cover against Boston pretty egregiously. We're right there on the number. Just a matter of making a couple field goals at any point in the game would have gotten them over the hump there. You're getting a revenge game here. Miami did get them on December 6th in Toronto, 112 to 103. Very similar story there, which seems to be the Toronto product this year, even before trade and after trade. They just are very inconsistent shooting the ball. There will be games, and that was one of them. They were tied in the middle of the fourth quarter, and Miami just pulled away for the win. Uh, Miami's on a dub three, so we talk about this merge dynamic in sports where you want to sell high and buy low. This is definitely a buy low Toronto, sell high Miami. Uh, If I had a free play, I would lean towards Toronto here. I just think, as you mentioned, this is probably going to be super tight going down the stretch. Yeah, you couldn't get to anything but lock it up officially for Chris on the under 228. Next.